What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Sunday afternoon. We have our live stream at 5 o'clock tonight. Yeah, I've got some some leaves and stuff for cleaning out the sump down there. Excuse me. Um, hope you guys join us at 5 o'clock Eastern. We'll be giving away, giving away... Um, to Marcus Ware autograph plaque um, to help raise funds for our buddy Rashid. Um, anybody that ends up doing a super chat, preferably it would be actually going to the GoFundMe and actually doing a donation on there is entered. And right now we're almost at $800 to help out Rashid. Rashid is in the hospital. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting out in the next couple of days and we're looking for him to have a place to stay. And so this will definitely help go to helping him heal from having those toes amputated. You know, I was sitting here, um, I was doing some work in the workshop and things, and I saw where Jonathan Hankins, Hankins who we had to worry about a little bit there because Hankins was kind of touch and go whether or not he was going to be re-signing with the Cowboys. We all hoped that he was coming back, the team was hoping he was coming back, but he kind of took his time in re-signing with the Cowboys and you wondered, is this a guy who's kind of pissed off at the team and maybe just says, I want to go elsewhere? Apparently, they got him signed to a reasonable contract. Jonathan Hankins, who the Cowboys traded for from the Raiders um, during the season, um, played great for us um, at the one technique, a position that the Cowboys typically uh, don't care much about. When he went down, you could tell that he was no longer in there because he was sorely missed. And fortunately, they re-signed him and he's healthy. Now, I want you to understand, I have been a guy for many, many, many years. Before this channel was really in existence and when I was on my other channel and before I had probably 2,000 subscribers, I have been pounding on the table. I've been screaming it from the highest mountains. I have been begging, pleading, and hoping that the Dallas Cowboys would actually have taken care of the defensive line. I wanted guys like Calais Campbell, basically after he left the Arizona Cardinals. People are like, man, that guy's old, man. You know, he only gets six or seven sacks a season. It's like, yeah, but from the defensive end, defensive tackle position, the way he stops the run, that guy was a game changer. And, of course, the year that I wanted him sign him. He was runner-up defensive player of the year and is still going strong in the NFL. But be that as it may, the Cowboys haven't really given a rat's ass about defensive tackles since the 70s. And the Cowboys have tried everything except the defensive line. We've gotten great cornerbacks. You know, Diggs, you can put him against anybody. Even though they trash him, he's got more interceptions than like the Raiders do the last couple of years combined. But be that as it may, the Cowboys are not that team that cares has cared that much about the defensive line until we got Dan Quinn. For the most part, the Cowboys look at defensive ends. That's the sexy pick for them. They love defensive ends. And they look at and they say, well, a defensive end can play defensive tackle. But they're really two different things because the defensive end typically is smaller and faster. And his thing is getting up the field. I'm getting up the field to get the quarterback. Defensive tackles usually are bigger guys that will be able to hold on to that tackle, okay, or the guard, and are better at run stopping. A one technique guy, lo and behold, is not a defensive tackle. I don't know why they call them nose tackles, because I guess more times than not, you're not doing 50 defenses like that's what we used to call it, where it's a three down line that's set. You have a big man in the middle whose job is to clog up the middle. Doesn't get statistics, doesn't sell jerseys, um, but he is the key. And I'm gonna go back and quote my main man, DMV, Okay, DMV, DMV, who years ago said, and he was 100% right, 
when you control the middle of the field, you control the field. And the two problems the Cowboys had was safety and defensive line. Now, last year, defense was great. They had great safety play. The Cowboys, we went from having really no safeties that were legitimate to having three really good safeties that are making you have one of the best safety backfields in the NFL right now, which was great. The Achilles heel for the Cowboys was stopping the run and bringing back a healthy Hankins that you hope you have for the whole season, and then adding a big guy, a big run stuffer, a big man that's not just a trash can full of dirt, to quote my man, to quote my man, Vosh Lombardi. This is a roll-off dumpster full of gravel on wheels going downhill. That's a Mark Holmes quote. Because that guy is big, He's strong. He can actually get up the field. Now, you can go back and look and say he didn't get sacks in college and stuff, but that's not what he was asked to do. He was to be a run stopper in the middle. Now, I love the quote, the quote from Jonathan Hankins that said, our defensive line room is nasty. And I have to agree with that. We have multiple pieces that can fit and be used differently. O.C. in Digazua. That guy has incredible hands from being a wrestler. He is faster. He's a little lighter, but is a guy that you can kind of use him to basically run around the offensive line. He's going to be a great guy to stunt. You know, when you're doing like an X-stunt, which is the defensive end is going to come around the defensive tackle. The defensive tackle is going to go outside, and he's going to try and take the defensive tackle, excuse me, the offensive tackle with him and creating a lane for the edge rusher to come inside. And hopefully what you get is you get him wide open. And he's got speed to do that. But then the Cowboys, if it becomes a we need to just man up because we've got a true run team, you can go with three heavy guys across the middle. You can put Mozzie Smith in there. You can use Quentin Bohannon. You can end up using Jonathan Hankins. And you literally have a half ton of fun on that defensive front. Yeah. You got a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds of defensive line that can be there to stop the run. Now, you can put you can put those three guys there and then put a Micah Parsons on the outside. And then end up having a Sam Williams or a Demarcus Lawrence on the outside. They can steamroll the middle. They're going to crash outside. That's deadly. Or you can get fancy. You can get fancy. You can use um, Osa and Digazua at one tackle. And you can bring D-Law, who's been working out as a defensive tackle as well. Put him at defensive tackle. And then have your Sam Williams and your Michael Parsons. And then your Jonathan Hankins in the middle. Now you got a guy who can clog the middle, and now you've got four guys that can just literally go balls to the wall, straight knee line for the quarterback. And with that kind of speed and strength, there's not many offensive lines that are going to be able to, to stop all four of those guys. Just not. All four, excuse me, all five of those guys. So the Cowboys have a lot of options, and I dare say this could be the best defensive front that the Cowboys have had since the 90s. I'm about as happy as I can be with this. This is incredible, and I just can't wait to see these guys in action when the season starts. And I'm going to say that this is a force to be reckoned with. And with the speed that they have, when you have your Justin Fields, when you have your Jalen Hurts, when you have your running quarterbacks, they will be able to close down the gaps and be able to have the speed to keep them in the pocket. And that's the key here is that you have lane integrity with guys that aren't getting blown off the ball. And I don't think that these guys are going to get blown off the ball. I just can't wait to see it. All right, you good people. I uh, got some work to do in my workshop. I'm still trying to work on the stuff for uh, the red brick house down there. 
got to get that place together and um, doing some work here on the house got the live stream at five o'clock hope you guys join us um, and uh, appreciate y'all peace